Uh, this morning, we were reminded of the rock band Queen and their song, Don't Stop Me Now. Now, if you are not familiar with that song, let me remind you of Starship and their song, Nothing's Gonna Stop Us Now. I think that title is something that we can see also in our passage today. Pharaoh dreamed, and Joseph the interpreter says, this is what God will do, Pharaoh. It is going to happen. Nothing's gonna stop what God will do. For it is already fixed by God. So if you have your Bibles with you, turn to Genesis chapter 41, and we will read verses 1 to 36. Uh, 33, rather. Genesis chapter 41, verses 1 to 33. After two whole years, Pharaoh dreamed that he was standing by the Nile. And behold, there came, out, came up out of the Nile seven cows, attractive and plump. And they fed in the reed grass. And behold, seven other cows, ugly and thin, came up out of the Nile after them and stood by the other cows on the bank of the Nile. And the ugly, thin cows ate up the seven attractive, plump cows. And Pharaoh awoke. And he fell asleep and dreamed a second time. And behold, seven ears of grain, plump and good, were growing on one stalk. And behold, after them sprouted seven ears, thin and blighted by the east wind. And the thin ears swallowed up the seven plump, full ears. And Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. So in the morning, his spirit was troubled. And he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt and all its wise men. Pharaoh told them his dreams, but there was none who could interpret them to Pharaoh. Then the chief cupbearer said to Pharaoh, I remember my offenses today. When Pharaoh was angry with his servants and put me and the chief baker in custody in the house of the captain of the guard, we dreamed on the same night, he and I, each having a dream with its own interpretation. A young Hebrew was there with us, a servant of the captain of the guard. When we told him, he interpreted our dreams to us, giving an interpretation to each man according to his dreams, to his dream. And as he interpreted to us, so it came about. I was restored to my office, and the baker was hanged. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they quickly brought him out of the pit. And when he had shaved himself and changed his clothes, he came in before Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have had a dream, and there is no one who can interpret it. I have heard it said of you that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. Joseph answered Pharaoh, it is not in me. God will give Pharaoh a favorable answer. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Behold, in my dream I was standing on the banks of the Nile. Seven cows, plump and attractive, came up out of the Nile and fed in the reed grass. Seven other cows came up after them, poor and very ugly and thin, such as I had never seen in all the land of Egypt. And the thin, ugly cows ate up the first seven plump cows. But when they had eaten them, no one would have known that they had eaten them, for they were still as ugly as at the beginning. Then I awoke. I also saw in my dream seven ears growing on one stalk, full and good. Seven ears withered, thin, and blighted by the east wind, sprouted after them. And the thin ears swallowed up the seven good ears, and I told it to the magicians, but there was no one who could explain it to me. Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, the dreams of Pharaoh are one. God has revealed to Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good cows are seven years, and the seven good ears are seven years. The dreams are one. 
The seven lean and ugly cows that came up after them are seven years. And the seven empty ears blighted by the east wind are also seven years of famine. It is as I told Pharaoh, God has shown to Pharaoh what he is about to do. There will come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt. But after them, there will arise seven years of famine and all the plenty will be forgotten in the land of Egypt. The famine will consume the land and the plenty will be unknown in the land by reason of the famine that will follow for it will be very severe. And the doubling of Pharaoh's dream means that the thing is fixed by God and God will shortly bring it about. Now, therefore, let Pharaoh select a discerning and wise man and set him over the land of Egypt. We'll stop there. We will continue the text next week. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Two long years after the chief baker was hanged to death, after the chief cupbearer was reinstalled to his position, Pharaoh dreamed twice. In his dream, he was standing by the Nile River, and from the Nile River, river came out seven fat cows. And then later, seven thin, ugly cows came up out of the Nile as well. And then the thin, ugly cows ate the seven attractive and fat cows. The second dream was about seven ears of grain that looked good. Okay, And then from one stalk sprouted another seven ears that were thin and looked blighted. And then the thin blighted ears swallowed up, looks parang bruised yung, yung uh, uh, tenga nung, uh, ng grain. Okay? Blighted. They swallowed up the better looking uh, ears of grain. So you have here these, you have here the two dreams of Pharaoh. Joseph said they're in fact the same. Same meaning. Now you have to understand that in ancient Egypt, dreams were a big thing. For them, it was a message from their gods. So Pharaoh was troubled after when he woke up. And he looked for interpretation by asking many magicians during his time and wise men. In fact, in other translations, it says priests. So umbaga, priests ito ng religions nila. And by the way, ancient Egypt, they have many religions. They have many gods. Polytheists ang mga Egyptians no mga time na yon. In fact, even now. But no one was able to interpret these dreams for Pharaoh. Now, probably the chief cupbearer saw this as an opportunity. The chief cupbearer suddenly remembered Joseph. And then he referred Pharaoh to Joseph. And immediately Pharaoh asked for Joseph. He was required to shave and change his clothes because he's going to approach the king, the Pharaoh, of course. Kailangan malinis. Cleansed, kailangan cleansed si Joseph. And so Pharaoh told Joseph his dream. And Joseph told him that the two different dreams mean the same. That the seven fat cows and the seven good ears were seven years of plenty means that the whole Egypt will go through seven years of having plenty of resources and then there will be plenty of produce in the nation, right? While the seven thin ugly cows right after the seven years of plenty and the seven blighted ears of grain, they all represent another seven years of not plenty, full of resource, plenty of resources. It represents famine. Okay, seven years of sagana, and then pitong taon ng taggutom ang mangyayari sa kanila. Yun yung interpretation ng mga panaginip ni Pharaoh. In fact, they're gonna forget about the seven years of plenty because of the severity of the seven years of famine. And then afterwards, Joseph said, at the end, as to why there were two. Bakit dalawa pa yung panaginip? Genesis chapter 41 verse 32 tells us, Joseph said, and the doubling, yung pagiging dalawa ng panaginip ni Pharaoh, and the doubling of Pharaoh's dream means 
that the thing is fixed by God and God will shortly bring it about. Joseph was saying that it has been ordained by God. It will surely happen. The doubling, yung pagkapare, yung pagkadalawa, yung dalawang, dalawang magkasunod na panaginip, magkaiba man, pero iisa lang ang ibig sabihin, it goes to show that it's going to happen. In fact, Joseph is saying, it has been ordained since the beginning. It has been fixed. Nothing's gonna stop us. Or nothing's gonna stop God, rather, from these from, from having or from from uh, from showering that plentiful resources in seven years and withholding resources for another seven years. Even before I went here, parang ganito sinasabi ni Joseph. Even before I went here, this has been fixed. Even before I went to prison, fixed na yan. Even before I went to Potiphar's house, that has already been fixed by God. Even before I was sold, fixed na tong mangyayari na to. Even before I was born, in fact, even before the foundations of the world, this has been fixed by God. It is going to happen whether we like it or not. That was what God has revealed to them at that time. And again, the, God doesn't give us new revelation now in our time. Hindi na tayo nananaginip ngayon at itinideclare natin yon na mensahe sa atin ng Panginoon. He has given to us His complete word and that is the Bible. And all the events in this book and all the events that happened to us, to everyone, to all mankind, to all creation, we can say as well that these things have been fixed by God. They have been ordained. There was this theologian na nagsabi na sobrang control kasi ng Panginoon ang lahat ng bagay. Lahat ng galaw natin, alam niya, kontrolado niya ang providensya. In fact, in His providence, He is actively working. Right? You are here today because, because of the providence of God. You have... Uh, You've spent 20 years, 30 years, or 40 years of your life, uh, and lahat ng pinagdaanan mo because of the providence of God. May nagsabi theologian, theologian na kapag pinatay mo yung ilaw, tapos merong isang, merong maliit na light coming from the outside, from, from the window, may kita mo, di ba, parang merong mga dust, yeah. right? Mga gumagalaw. At sinasabi ng theologian na yun, even yung bawat galaw na yun, I fixed by God. Right? Even yung pinakamaliliit na bagay to the biggest of all planets. Right? Lahat yun ay under the sovereign control of God. Obviously, eto yung nasa puso ni Joseph. He understood the providence, the sovereign control of God. That's why he has this conviction to say, fix na to, mangyayari talaga to. Ito yung gagawin ng Panginoon. He had, why? Because Joseph had first-hand experience of the acts of God. He had experience with God. He understood who God is. He knows who God is. And he knows that God acts this way. And whatever God does now, he has ordained it even before time began. What he says, he will do. If God reveals to Pharaoh his dream and interpretation to that dream, it will surely happen because it is fixed by God. We should also have the same heart like Joseph. We should have sensitive minds. Dapat trained ang ating mga isipan na naiintindihan natin ang mga nangyayari sa atin ay because of, sa providensya ng Panginoon. Na ito ay fix na niya. Kaya ang mensahe natin this afternoon is that the truth that God has ordained everything from beginning to end must be in every believer's heart. So this is something that should be in our hearts. Why? Una, my first point, because solus deus es, which means there is only one God. And because of this, what does he deserve? Soli deo gloria, or God's glory alone. In my attempt to do alliteration, I had to translate them into Latin. 
So, but you get the idea. Solus Deus S, there is only one God. And also, Soli Deo Gloria, God's glory alone. Let's look at the first point. There is only one God. It should be in our hearts. We should understand that God is sovereign and He has ordained everything from beginning to end. Why? Solus Deus Est. Because there is only one God. We can see in the dreams of Pharaoh, God was trying to show Pharaoh something. And also everyone, and even Joseph. He's showing how powerless the Egyptian gods were. In Egypt, as I've said a while ago, they worship many gods, myriads of gods. One of the primary gods of Egypt during that time was the Nile River. The Nile River. In fact, a known historian, a Greek historian whose name was Herodotus, he's saying that Egypt was a gift of the Nile. Egypt was a gift of the river. Egypt sprung out of the Nile, ang sinasabi. Ang nagbigay, ng, ang, ang Egypt as a nation ay regalo ng Dios Diyosang Nile River. Yun ang sabi ng Greek historian. So they believe that the Nile River was their God. The Nile River, in fact, was known to be their provider. Siya nga nag-provide ng Egypt, Right? In fact, it was known to be a provider of grains, right? Provision, food. This is why in Pharaoh's dream, when the Nile River provided not just the fat cows, but also the thin cows who devoured the fat ones, it was something disturbing for Pharaoh. Teka, ba't ganito yung Diyos Diyosa namin? Nagpo-provide pala lang ganito. Hindi lang fat cows, kundi yung mga pangit na cows din. Tapos kinain pa yung mga malulusog na cows. Even the grain, like I said, in their understanding was provided by the Nile. So yung second dream na uh, in swallow up nung pangit na ears of grain yung magaganda, again, disturbing yon for Pharaoh. Kasi parang sinasabi ng dream niya, uh, ganito ang Diyos Diyosan mo. Ganito yung pinapakita ng Diyos sa kanila, kay Pharaoh, that their gods are not the ones who provide them true provisions, true food. Yun ang sinasabi dito. But not only that, hindi lang naman yung Nile River ang Diyos Diyosan nila. The cows also were treated as gods in Egypt. In fact, one of their gods was named Hathor, and the animal form of that god was a cow. But also, in the entire Egypt, so imagine mo, ikaw yung managinip na kinain yung gods mo na malulusog ng mga pangit at payat na cows. So pinapakita sa kanyang panaginip na powerless itong mga just josan ninyo. Again, not only that, in the entire Egypt, Pharaoh was not just a king. He was also a god. Deity. Si Pharaoh. Imagine their god. Pharaoh was troubled. A god who was troubled. What kind of god is that? So their gods, the Nile River and the cows, Pharaoh, were but meaningless compared to the one true God of Joseph. The one true God is also better than any of the magicians, the wise men, or so-called priests of these other so-called religions. For no one can interpret the dreams. But the source of the dreams, who is God, according to Joseph, interpretations belong to God. Even the magicians compared to God, I nothing. They were all powerless compared to the one true God of Joseph. Yun yung pinapakita ng Diyos sa panaginip ni Pharaoh. Joseph told Pharaoh, God, it is God who has revealed to you what he's about to do. It is not the Nile River, it is not your many cows, Hathor, who is a female god, by the way. It is not even you, Pharaoh. 
God will reveal to you. God revealed to you rather what He's about to do and He will do it. It has been fixed. Not by the Nile River. Not by the cows. But by God. Your gods and idols, Pharaoh, are nothing compared to the one sovereign ruler who is God. He is the sovereign ruler who is in control of all things. Hindi nakasalalay sa Nile ang provision. Hindi nakasalalay sa growth ng mga cows ang provision. Sa Diyos lamang. In fact, God is so in control, He can give you plenty and He can withhold for seven years and not give you anything. He is in control of all things. From beginning to end, it has been fixed by God. So there is this contrast here. Now you might say that you don't create idols. How does this apply to me? I don't create my own gods. I don't even have statues of uh, any idols at home. But indeed, you may have idols in your hearts. They may be a person. They may be a thing. Maybe your careers. Maybe anything na kung saan ibinubuhos mo lahat ng attention mo, pag yan tinanggal sa'yo, magandang evaluation to know, maybe ina-idolize ko na tong whatever this is. We may have put all of our trust in them, thinking that provisions come from them. Na sobrang, probably ina-idolize natin ang ating mga trabaho na eto talaga ang source ko. Right? Now we think that they have power over us. And because of these idols, the one true God becomes blurry in our eyes. In the Old Testament, the usual attack against these idols were the fact that they cannot even speak. Sabi sa Psalm chapter 135, verses 15 to 18, The idols of the nations are silver and gold, the work of human hands. They have mouths, but do not speak. They have eyes, but do not see. They have ears, but do not hear. Nor is there any breath in their mouths. Listen, ganun sinabi dito. Those who make them become like them. So do all who trust in them. Those who have other gods and other idols, they become like them. Pharaoh was like his gods. Egypt was like their Pharaoh. The same is true for us. That we become like who we worship. I mean, we don't become a God, but we become like God in holiness and in righteousness. That's what happens when you worship God. We become like Him. The more you don't worship God, the more na hindi mo siya, malaki yung opportunity na hindi mo siya maging kawangis. Kasi yung blessing that He showers in worship those are the means for your Christ conformity ay hindi mo tinatanggap. So we see here that we become like who we worship. Paano mangyayari yun? How can we become like God in a sense in holiness and righteousness? This is how it happened. God took the form of a servant, born in the likeness of men, Jesus Christ lived a perfect life, showing to us, all of us, what holiness really looks like. And He died on the cross, showing all of us what true love is. By being the sacrifice in behalf of His people, He was the one punished for the sins of His people. And He rose again from the dead, defeating both sin and death. And He did those things to save His people, to redeem His people, the church, so that His people would be holy and blameless like Him. 
the people of God is becoming like who they worship in holiness and righteousness. This is what Christ did. Unlike these gods or idols who do nothing at all, and yet if you worship them, you will be like them. Pero si Cristo mismo ang namatay sa krus na buhay muli so that you will worship God and as, as we know, worship is transformative, we become like who we worship. We have been redeemed to become Christ-like. Are you an idol worshiper? Meron ka bang mga idol sa iyong puso? Whatever that is, whoever that is, na tingin mo, na attention mo, ay nandoon na na hindi mo maisip yung mawala yun sa buhay mo kung ano man yan trabaho career tao na mas maangat pa sila kaysa sa mismong Diyos mo pera ba to? if yes if you have other idols in your heart Repent of your sins now. Do not become like these idols. Christ died for the sins of men so that you and I can become like Him in holiness and righteousness. Repent now of your sins and believe in Him. Believe in His provision of salvation and forgiveness of sins. I'm sure you have idols Musicians, dancers, celebrities, kung sino man yan. I'm not saying that it is bad to like them. But most of the time, we imitate them. Nagaya natin yung buhok, ginagaya natin yung kutis, yung pananamit, yung boses. Ginagaya natin sila kasi iniidolo, iniidolo natin sila. Right? Na marahil hindi na natin napapansin. The same is true for all kinds of idols. If we worship money, we will look like the face imprinted on the money. If we worship our jobs, we will spend more time there than in God's household. Na tingin mo, eh, hindi pwede, kailangan buong mundo na andito. Wala na, may just Diyosa na. Mag-ingat tayo, mga kapatid. Remember, those things are powerless. At the end of the day, the source is God. Do not forget that. Do not put your trust and hope in these gods, in these idols, rather, if ever you have them. Be aware. The challenge for us is put all your hope and trust in our sovereign God alone. He has fixed everything from beginning to end. He is not like the other so-called gods. So therefore, put your hope and trust in Him alone. He has so fixed everything na sinasabi ni Paul sa Romans chapter 8, verse 30, if you are in Christ, you have been predestined. That was something in the past. You have been called. If you're a Christian, that's something in the past. And those whom He called, He also justified. If you're a Christian, if you're a Christian that happened in the past, you have been justified already. And here He says, those whom He justified, He also glorified. It is fixed. And Paul uses past tense for the word glorified. But we all know it hasn't happened yet. But there's this surety that it will happen. This is how sovereign your God is. So do not put then your trust and hope in any idols that you have, that you may have in your heart, whatever that is. Put all your trust and hope in the sovereign God alone was fixed everything. He has proven himself to us. I mean, he doesn't need, even need to prove himself to us. But his works will show that he is the one true God. Kitang kita sa kanyang ginawa. Sa sobrang sovereign niya, na sa kanyang providensya, he's in control of all things, na pinadala niya ang kanyang anak. He made sure that the Son of God will come down on earth to earth and will live a perfect life and die on that cross. Jesus Christ died on that cross. You can say because he was murdered by those evil men. That is true. But he died on that cross because of the sovereign control of God. 
it was God who delivered Christ on the cross. It was God. Just as it was God who delivered, who put Joseph into prison. And then later on, exalted him to be the number two in Egypt. That is how sovereign God is. Put all your trust and your hope in this powerful God compared to whatever idols you have in your hearts. He has ordained everything from beginning to end. He is in control. The only one in control. Trust him, in, trust him at times of temptations. When you are tempted to sin, trust the sovereign God. Don't, tr- don't put your trust on things, on people. When you are tempted, trust that the Lord can deliver you. The God who is in control of everything can definitely be with you during the time of temptations. Trust Him at times of trouble. Because if you are in Christ, definitely the one who has ordained everything from beginning to end has the power to strengthen you as well at times of trouble, times of suffering. When you are weak, the powerful God can give you strength. No other idols can give you that. They can't even speak. Remove the idols from your hearts. Don't worship them. Don't worship people. Don't idolize them to the point of removing God in your heart. Hindi nakasalalay ang growth ng bansang ito sa, I mean, ginagamit ng Diyos, of course. Ang government authorities, ginagamit ng Diyos, lahat ng, ng authorities na siya mismo ang naglagay. But at the end of the day, nasa sovereign hands ng Panginoon ang lahat. Sa kanya nakasalalay. So put your trust and hope in Him alone. Maganda yung sinabi ng isang theologian. Sabi niya, leaders, politicians, and even dictators. Hindi ito yung exactong pagkakasabi niya, pero ito yung thought niya. And even dictators, they are not the ones who make history. History is in God's hands. The source of your provisions, ultimately, hindi naman talaga nang galing sa mga tao. Ginagamit sila ng Diyos. Yes, the source of comfort does not come from anyone. They may be used by God. Yes, but ultimately it comes from the sovereign God. <coughs> Hindi ba comfort yun? Hindi ba comforting yun? Because people will fail us as we are also failures to them. But only God, who we are sure because He is God, He is sovereign, we are 100% assured of what He can do. So do you have idols in your hearts? Do you spend more time with them than spending time with God in prayer and in worship? Let me ask you, is there even a competition between them and God? So even Joseph knew that he couldn't compete with God like those puny gods. For when he was asked to provide an interpretation, sabi niya, it is not in me. It is not in me, but God. My last point is soli Deo Gloria, God's glory alone. While it's true that Joseph has been helpful to the chief cupbearer, even to Potiphar, and now even to Pharaoh, naging helpful si Joseph, he knew that he must give way to the source of revelation. He knew that he must give way to the provider during the plentiful seven years, even to the one who is the source of famine. He acknowledges that these things come from God alone. He said, it is not in me. God will give Pharaoh a favorable answer. And then after explaining what the dream meant, he says in verse 28, God God has shown to Pharaoh what he's about to do. So Joseph was saying, it is God, it will not be you, Pharaoh, this is God's doing. Ina-attribute niya sa Diyos to galing. The thing is fixed by God and God will surely bring it about. Joseph is glorifying God. Siya to. Hindi ito sa akin galing. Kahit ito sinabi ng kaber, oh, I know someone, someone who helped me when I was in prison and he's, he was a Hebrew, I forgot his name. Let 
let me arrange something so you can uh, you can meet him. So here's the guy who was able to interpret my dreams. He is the man. But Joseph is saying, it is not in me. It is God. Just yun. Means easily. Sobrang madali naman tayo matempt. Ako yun. Ako yun, ako yun. He acknowledged who the sovereign God is. He knew. He experienced God. God spoke to him. God made a covenant with his forefathers. God has given him a lot of favors. All of these things. He attributes everything to God alone. Who deserves all praises? God. Who gave him the ability to, uh, to oversee people? Oversee his brothers? The house of Potiphar? The prisoners? Who has given him the ability? God. Who sent him to prison? God. Who sent him to Pharaoh so he would be exalted in the land of all Egypt? God. Joseph knew. Joseph knew who's, kung sino gumawa ng mga bagay na to and alam din niya kung sino ang dapat mag-glorify dito. Hindi ako, Diyos. This is the opposite of our natural sin, self-exaltation. We want to be exalted. Tayo. That self-exalting attitude. That is what's in our hearts at times. This is a pride problem. And of course, we can trace it back in the Garden of Eden. Dun palang sa temptation ni Satanas, kay Eve, you will be like God. You will be like God. It will be you who will be exalted, not God. As the opposite of humility. The opposite of the one or the uh, of the greatest, one of the greatest statements in scripture that we have read a while ago. Right? Yung self-exaltation, ang opposite nito, yung binasa natin kanina by John the Baptist, John chapter 3 verse 30. He must increase, but I must decrease. John the Baptist was talking about Jesus Christ who is to be exalted, who is to be lifted up because of who He is and what He has done. And people was like, Teka, is, is, is this the guy? Ito na ba yung hinahanap natin? Ito ba yung natin? And John the Baptist was saying, No, He must increase, but I must decrease. It, hindi ako yan. You think I'm doing this and you're repenting of your sins, you're benefiting from my ministry. No, it, it's, it is him. I must decrease. He must increase. Of course, such humility of John the Baptist comes from who he is worshipping. And that is none other than his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Ultimately, such humility comes from the Messiah himself. And we can read that, this humility in Philippians chapter 2. If you have your Bibles with you, go to Philippians chapter 2. <clears throat> Verse 5 onwards. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 onwards. This is the kind of humility that obviously John the Baptist was imitating. And all of us should imitate as well. Verse 5. Have this mind among yourselves. Make sure that this is in your mind, in your hearts, this kind of humility, which is yours in Jesus Christ. So, ang ganda na sabi ni Paul dito. Make sure that this is in your mind. This kind of humility, make sure na naka-imprint ito sa inyong mga minds. And you know what? It is yours in Christ Jesus. If you are in Christ Jesus, it is, it is there. It is there. It is yours in Christ Jesus. Verse 6, he says, Who, Jesus Christ, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. Right? To the point that he has assumed a nature that is not deity. Sabi dito, 
verse 6, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. Verse 7, but emptied himself. This is not Christ emptying. He's removing some of his godly or, de- or uh, yung mga qualities niya as a God, attributes niya as a God. He's removing them. No. Hindi niya ini-empty ang kanyang sarili. In fact, the language here is, ang sinasabi, how did he empty himself? By taking the form. That's how he emptied himself. By assuming a lower nature and that is of human, a human being. Right? Kita niyo yung humility? This is coming from God Himself. This is the kind of humility that all of us must imitate. And by the way, Paul says, it is, that is yours. You, you possess it. You, pos- you possess such humility if you are in Jesus Christ. Therefore, have this in your mind. Go back to the gospel. Look back at the life of Christ. What did He do? It was in the form of God. But he emptied himself by taking a form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. That's already humbling, right? That is already humbling, and we can stop there. Paul could, could put a period there and, wow, that's great humility from God. I mean, the Nile River wouldn't become a, become a person. The cows will not become a person. God became man. God-man. And then it says in verse 8, And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Again, it is already humbling for God to become man. And then nakikita nyo yung pababa ng pababa ng pababa. Naging tao, eh dahil tao siya, dahil yun yung nature niya, mamamatay siya. Nangyari pa sa kanya yung kamatayan. Uh, kita pa natin yung humility niya kasi yung pinakanakakahiyang kamatayan pa sa krus. That's the kind of humility. That, that's the kind of uh, humility that John the Baptist had and we should all have. And this is the kind of humility only possible in Jesus Christ, which Paul said. It is only possible if we believe in the one who carried the cross to Calvary, to his death. If the one who lived in humility is in us, just then you also can be humble like him. If the one who carried the cross is in us, just then you also can deny yourself and take up your own cross and follow him. There must be self-denial, humility. Compared to our natural sin of self-exaltation. If you are in Jesus Christ, it is yours, Paul says. If you're not in Christ, it is not yours. We don't possess it. We need to understand the humility of Jesus Christ. What he has done on the cross to die for the sins of men. You are then to repent of your sins and believe his work. If you believe in Christ, then Christ is in us. While our natural selves would hoard glory, there is now this uh, desire, this understanding that all glory belongs to God, that we must indeed decrease and He must increase. That's what you call ascribing to God the glory. Ascribing glory to God is only possible if the radiance of God who is Christ is in us. Now, we're not adding to His glory. We are reflecting His glory in our works, in our lives. Just as Joseph ascribed glory to God by saying, it is not in me, but it is God. But you can see in his humility, in his life, kita natin yung yung humility niya sa paghihintay, humility niya sa pag-iisip sa even sa prisoners, makita natin sa pagbabago sa kanyang buhay. We are like mirrors that reflect the glory of God. We shouldn't be the ones getting all the glory, getting the glory. It should be God. Dapat nagre-reflect yan papunta sa Diyos. Yan challenge sa atin. Cultivate humility in your heart and desire that God be glorified in us. What a humbling truth that is. Firstly, that God uses us as instruments 
so that His glory is manifested on earth? Sino ba tayo? Pero ginagamit tayo to ascribe glory to Him? In God's glory should our delight be, brethren. How do we ascribe glory to God? Kapag maminig sabi sa'yo, galing mo, we praise God. Alam ba? Uy, bro, thank you sa ano, nakaminister ka sa akin, SDG. Solideo Gloria. Tapos sa chat, in fact, nakaka-paste paste mo lang SDG. Walang, walang emotions yun, SDG. Or praise God. Or kung hindi, ilalike mo na lang, yun lang. Ganun ba tayo mag-ascribe ng glory kay God just because, just when we say praise God. I'm not saying it's bad, ah, by the way. Baka biglang ang mangyari sa inyo, oh, sige, yes, give it to me. <laughs> Hindi po, ah. Wala pong masama doon na binambalik natin sa Diyos. Praise God. Uh, uh, glory to God. Salamat po. Wala rin, wala lang masama doon na magpasalamat tayo, na ina-acknowledge natin. Uh, kasi na-acknowledge natin na ginagamit tayo ng Panginoon, eh. At tapos binabalik pa natin, si Lord talaga yon. Uh, wala pong masama doon, right? Pero hindi lang naman doon natin ina-ascribe ang glory sa Panginoon. Alam nyo, this is not natural to all mankind. Because naturally, all of us want to hoard. So natin, kunin ang, mga, ang glory. We want what? Recognition. We want to hoard all the glory for ourselves. If there's success in ministry, in our jobs, we want our names to be heard. If we're accomplished, what? Parents, we want our children to acknowledge that it is us. Di ba nga sa Tagalog, sikat nga yung utang na loob. If our wives are becoming more Christ-like, husbands tend to attribute that to themselves. If the husbands are encouraged because of the service and the submissions of the wives, sometimes wives tend to attribute that also to themselves. We are glory hoarders. If we do not immediately kill that desire for our own glory, you know what's going to happen? We will crave for it. Sinanay natin yung sarili natin. Next time, hahanapin mo siya. And next time, hindi mo siya makita, more sins will come out. In God's glory, should our delight be? But how do we ascribe glory to God? Here's the answer. But by living a life dedicated to the Lord and cultivating humility, knowing that God alone is sovereign over all things and that He deserves all praises. Just live in a way that would reflect the glory of God in obedience to Him. Having that desire, Lord, this is for you. Nakita niyo yung mga challenges ni Paul sa Ephesians? Sinasabi niya, Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. Sinasabi pa niya, if you are a, uh, an employee, submit to your master just like you are submitting to the Lord. That is enough. Para ma-ascribe natin ng glory sa kanya, hindi yung, oy, good job. Again, walang masama to appreciate. Pero enough na yung pagsunod natin na while we are obeying our earthly masters, or earthly authorities, that we are doing it knowing that we have a greater master whom we are subject, ka tayo ay nagsasubmit sa kanya. That is how you ascribe glory to God. Sabi nga ni Calvin, John Calvin, and I quote, We never truly glory in Him until we have utterly discarded our own glory. The elect are justified by the Lord in order that they may glory in Him and in none else. Look at the people that God used. Moses, he was called in Numbers chapter 12 as very meek. David, who was called a man after God's own heart, means he desired for the glory of God. That's what he desires. And he, 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 he did ascribe glory to God in his faithful obedience to the Lord. But of course, the Lord Jesus Christ ultimately is our great example who says of himself, I am gentle and lowly. He is a perfect picture of humility. So because God has ordained 
everything from beginning to end. Therefore, let us in humility bring glory to Him alone with our lives in obedience to Him, in devotion to Him. The commendations of people are not the indicators that you are indeed bringing glory to God. Oy, ang galing mo. And naisip natin, oy, I brought glory to God. Even without it. Even without it. If you obeyed God by faith, that is ascribing glory to God already. It is the holy and blameless life that He is blessing you with. Yun yung nag ascribe ng glory sa Panginoon. The more we live a holy and blameless life, the more we are reflecting. The more na nakikita, alam mo kung sino, hindi ikaw, kundi yung epekto ng ginawa ni Kristo sa buhay mo. Because as you pursue holiness in, in Christ, at the end of the day, it is Christ who increases and we are the ones who decrease. So what should make us trust God more and ascribe to Him the glory He alone deserves is the fact that our beginning and our end have been fixed by God. So remember, cultivate humility in Christ and put all your hope and trust in our sovereign God alone. Let us pray. Great God and gracious Father, thank you, Lord, for your providence for how you have brought us here, for how you have called us, justified us, and how you will glorify us. Thank you, Lord, for you have fixed everything. You have ordained everything from beginning to end. Therefore, Lord, we are, Lord, we are assured. We have this confidence, O oh Lord, all the more to put our trust and hope in you, Lord, because you are sovereign. And we can see your sovereignty ultimately in, your, in the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord, as also, may you give us strength strength to cultivate humility. May we always look to Christ and see the perfect picture of humility. Enable us, O oh Lord, to mortify self-exaltation, to, to, uh, to cultivate humility in our hearts. So thank you, O oh Lord, for your grace and mercy in our lives. We praise you in Christ's name. Amen.